I'm sitting here waiting for the power to go off. I, as many of you know, I just returned here just recently. Two weeks ago, I returned from the States and the even the day that I returned, the power went off for a few moments and then it came back on. And then it happened again the next day. This week, starting the 16th, the they they may have done it sooner. They resumed the organized power outages, the planned outages. And instead of them going for an hour to an hour and a half like they did the last time, they're they're going three and four hour shifts of no power. So that's the reality of living here in Ecuador. They they apparently according to something that I read uh, the other day there never has really been a good maintenance program for the the power grid here the infrastructure the power infrastructure and and now we're paying for it they've gone for years um, money being shuffled to the wrong places corruption taking over and you know and so now everybody's paying for it and of course they the other side of the coin is they they blame it on the drought you know Yet, as I flew into Ecuador last week or week before last, all I could see was green. I don't know where this drought is, you know. But apparently, I mean, there is, there's no nuclear power here. I don't know where Ecuador gets all of its power from. They get some from Peru. They get some from Colombia. And just here and outside of Monta, just on the other side, on the, the eastern side of Monta, there's what looks like a power plant out there and they have three big stacks of this black smoke billowing out of the chimneys you know or these exhaust stacks and i don't know for sure but i think that's a local power plant here but in the last 24 hours my power has been off in my building uh three four times Two times, two of those times was during the middle of the night, starting at midnight. The first time the power was off from midnight to 6 a.m. And the second time was uh, 12 to 4. And then the third time, yeah, last night it was off from 12 to 4. Yesterday afternoon it was off from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. And today it's supposed to be off from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. So, you know, you say, well, Don, what do you do? I mean, you know, how, how are we supposed to work there if we can't keep our power on? Well, the, the, most of these buildings, most of these apartment buildings right here have generators. Leave it to my dumb ass to pick a building that has a generator, but only powers the elevators, the garage doors, the foyer lights, and our refrigerators. You know, let's don't mess with the air conditioning, you know, okay, folks, you know. Let's, you know, don't energize the whole building. Let's just, just do part of it, you know. And that's the way it is in my building. So when the power goes off, I have no air conditioning. Thank God I don't need heat, but I have no air conditioning. And, of course, no lights, you know, no fan, nothing. And then last night, I actually opened my window and my both sides of my apartment tried to get a breeze through. Could not get a breeze. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't see, you know, from doing all my research and re reading everything on Facebook, the local groups, trying to figure out, you know, what the hell are they going to do about this? Nobody has any answers. It's a typical Ecuador. Nobody has any answers. And I'm trying my best to contain myself here and be as civil about this as I can. But I'm telling you, folks, it's hard to live in a country where you can't have consistent water supply, consistent power. You know, you can't, don't have law enforcement. We don't have uh, traffic management systems here. We don't, there's so many things, little things wrong that it makes it really difficult to, to feel the love. I know I'm going to catch shit for saying that because you know, 
I'm damned if I do and if I'm damned if I don't. If I don't, if I tell you that it's all, you know, rainbows and unicorns and perfect here, and then you get here and you find out that it's really not that way, now it's all my fault, you know? Yet, if I tell you, here are the problems you're going to have to deal with, like what I'm going through right now, then my girlfriend and my friends that live here, the locals here, all get their all their panties all up in a wad and they think that their their career is over with because Don Shader said the power goes off. It's nothing further from the truth. But this is a problem. I don't know. I don't have the answers. I don't know what they're going to do. Obviously, I'm not going to continue to live in a place where I can't have consistency in my environment, you know. We all need, we're spoiled, you know, we're from the United States. We, we, I mean, even, hell, even when I was in the United States, uh, we had a period of one day where we didn't have any power in Mesa. Go figure. So that's just, you know, something that's going on. I just wanted to share it with you and let you know you know, that these things happen, man. I mean, this is the way it's going to be here. This is the way it's been for a long time. It's probably going to be this way for a long time to come. The other thing I want to talk to you about is, I've mentioned this before in the past, about the clone license plates. The, the I, as many of you know, uh, there's a underground business here in Ecuador where people are cloning license plates and then selling them to people under the table, so to speak. And they're, they're selling them, they're, and they're, they're matching them up with cars similar to the original cars that belong to the plates that are cloned. So, for example, my car is a 2023 Chinese-made Southeast DX3. And it's white with a black top and a sunroof and pretty plain looking. And, of course, I has the original license plate that came with it when I bought it. Since then, another Southeast white with a black top showed up in Wyakill that has the same plates on it. And that anal pour in Wyakill and Duran is running through speed, photo radar zones, just come and go. I mean, just like, I've, I've received five tickets so far. Actually, I've received seven tickets, all total. One was a legitimate ticket of mine that I got here in Monta. I paid 50 bucks and I fought it and I won. The second one was a friend of mine was driving my car when I went to the States and he went to a photo radar zone and got busted and we 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 fought that one and we paid 50 bucks and we fought that one and we won that one. The other five tickets are from Duran and Wykill. So the solution is to file a petition with the prosecutor's office and get an order to change the registration. And you would think that that was just a matter of a few keystrokes on a keyboard into a computer system to make the changes. That's what one would think. But apparently it doesn't work that way. It, and I, I even had to take my car to the dealership and leave it sit there while the engine cooled down for a couple hours. And the police came in and verified the serial numbers on the engine block to make sure that it was matched with the car and that it matched my matriculation. And for those of you that don't know what matriculation is, that's your registration. Here they call it matriculation. So it's been three months since my lawyer that I paid $800 to filed this petition to have the registration changed and it hasn't happened yet. So I went and saw him last week and he gave me a paper it's a copy of an order to the prosecutor's office to, to show to police if I get stopped. That look, here's an order to change the matriculation and get this number out of my name and so forth. 
And then when I got home with this order, I discovered in the very first paragraph it references a car that doesn't even belong to me. It's not even the same car, not even the same color, and a completely different plate. So the lawyer screwed up. And so I brought it to his attention, and he says they're talking about it, and they're going to figure out uh, how to file an amended order, I guess. But they'll take care of it. I have, I have confidence in my lawyers, David Via Laurel, Avogado, and he's a very young man. He's a very confident attorney, and I have confidence in him, and I, I believe that he will get this taken care of. I feel sorry for him because he's, he, he works very hard to make everything right. And then somebody in his staff made a little boo-boo, and now he's standing there with egg on his face. But anyway, we'll get that worked out. So I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about that situation. I don't know what I'm going to do about this power situation. The Back on the power situation, I got it. I saw an email or I saw an a article somewhere that the president here, President Daniel Noboa, fired the Ministry of Energy here. So whoever is in charge of the energy grid here in Ecuador has been terminated and they're no longer on the job. Supposedly uh, there was some, some, some text in there that made some reference to some corruption issues, you know. Um, but, you know, I don't know what's true or not true. Uh, if, if, if this video continues and there's an uh, an, an amendment to it uh, where I found out some information then you'll see it. If not, then I'm leaving it like it is. So, but hopefully they'll work it out. They, I've also heard rumors that Colombia is not delivering the same power to us that they used to because we're being punished for the crap that we did with Mexico They, where we went into the embassy and got our own prisoner out, you know, which I think will just blow over in a few months and everybody will forget about it, you know. But I don't know if I believe that either. I don't know that we're being punished. I don't. I can't explain why we keep losing our power. I just know that most of the buildings around here deal with it by having a whole building generator, you know. And I live in probably the one building on this street that has the generator that doesn't generate power for the whole building, just parts of it, but anyway. So that's all I got to share with you for today. I know it's not good news. People are probably wondering, do I want to stay here? At the, the way I feel right now, I don't. I don't want to. But I can't just pack up and leave. I have a car here. I have a lease on an apartment. I have money tied up in CDs here that don't mature until next February. I can't just abandon ship. But I got to say, I'm not very happy not very happy at all. Ecuador, you're really disappointing me. You know, do I suggest that you come on down here? I say, make your own mind up, do your own research and make that decision on your own. Don't ask me if I tell you what I really feel, then I'm in deep water with so many people around here. I couldn't even think about it. Because my, my opinion and my impression and my feelings and my reaction, you know, might be completely different from way, the way you would handle it. So I would say there's really no reason not to come, but I would say, please do your homework, do your research, be aware, okay? Join the Facebook groups that's in my description and join them and talk to people down here and see what other people are doing. For a lot of people, this is not a big deal, especially those that live in a building with a generator. So, okay. Other than that, everything is hunky-dory, all right? If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like this video, bite me. And I say that with peace and love. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.